the member of the public joins virtually and uh, creates an audio or video disruption, it will be ejected manually by us. And anybody here asks that you please keep it respectful as we will do up here. Um, okay, if anybody out there wants to talk, you can raise your hand in the chat and we will hopefully glance over there and see you. Next, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> The approval of the agenda. We'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Anybody any additions, subtractions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Thank you. Okay, I move to approve the Board of Selectmen regular meeting minutes for July 18th, 2023. Any comments, additions? Pretty quick. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, thank you. Audience of citizens, anybody here wish to speak that is something that is not on the agenda? Anybody in the chat? Um, nobody in the chat. Okay, I see the young lady back there. Please state your name and address, please. Um, my name is Andy Lemel. I'm here to represent Titan Energy with regards to the EV charging. Okay, thank you. That's on the agenda, correct? Okay. Yes. I didn't see it on here, so I apologize. Nope, it's all right. Okay. And the lady in front? Yeah, Donna. I have three. I'd just like to. Uh, Bring to the attention of the board what a fantastic job Dan this is doing um, as the recreation director. She has had so many activities at the town beach. She has um, drawn people to and I've been watching her at the town beach and I'm sure she's doing great things elsewhere, but that's where I, I've seen her this summer. And um, she's just doing a great job. Good. Thank you for your comment. Uh, for those of you who don't remember, we have our final concert tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? Thursday. Thursday. It's not tomorrow? This week. No, it's the same thing. It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. It is tomorrow. I'm sorry. Jen will be playing her ukulele at Red Heart on Thursday, trying to get as many people out there as she can. And we have the winery. That's what I was thinking. The dairy. Wait, the winery, Jen? Anything to get people to drink more. The cuddles. The wine. I told them I wanted to borrow the ukulele so I could play it while. Burns all around us. Um, <laughs> not the wine, of course. So, uh, thank you for your comment. She is doing a fantastic job. I get a lot of feedback, so that's great. Anybody else in the final citizen? No? No? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Old business. First is we're going to set a town meeting or move right to a public hearing to adopt the proposed ordinance provided property tax exemption for farm buildings. That's number one. We voted on that to push that through, so it has to go to a meeting. And to consider the adoption of the amendment to existing ordinances entitled Ordinance Regarding Open Burning. That's come to question in a couple of meetings. We have uh, some changes we'd like to discuss. And revised ordinance, ordinance regarding open and seasonal burning. So that'll be on the same thing, won't it? No? Yeah, it will be the same. Okay, so there's two things here. We can set a public hearing and then we would have to have a town meeting to vote on it. Am I correct there? 
Yeah, so you have to go to a town meeting if the board is, there's two ways to do it. If the board select will want to adopt the ordinance, you have to have a public hearing. If you choose to have a town meeting, you don't have to have a public hearing. You can go straight to town meeting and have discussion at the town meeting. So it's just two paths based on our charter. There's one path, the hearing, then we have to go have another meeting after that? You, you'd have a, meet, a hearing and then you could adjourn to a town meeting or a hearing and then go to the board of select a meeting and set a town meeting. Why don't we just go to a town meeting? Get the decision made. That's what I, that would be your thoughts. Yes. I agree. Or based on input, though, there's a option for public to make comments, suggest changes. At a town meeting, yes, there is. Okay. But I don't believe you could make changes to a published town meeting and then vote on it. I think you might have to move to adjourn, adjourn to a another town meeting, and then publicize the changes. No, you could talk over here. Well. If you just have a town meeting, it's yes or no on the. I don't know if we can amend the wording at the town meeting, can we? Why not? You can amend it, but, but it, it certainly can be discussion, discussion. Right. Yes, but what are you saying is if there's opposition to what we or they want, want to change, then you would have to adjourn the meeting and go back to a hearing if we change. No, I. Like, we would have to set a second set a, another change or set a town meeting later. It gets confusing. The moderator can, can accept amendments. Yeah, you could from the floor. Right. Because yeah, we have amended motions from the floor at town meetings. All right. So then we would have to vote on the amendment and then, and then vote on the new, the new resolution that was. So I agree we should just go to the town meeting. Anybody? In opposition to that, do we need a vote on it? We just go ahead and do it. Well, we have um, we have a motion to actually set a town meeting, so we have to decide when we want to have the town meeting, and then it'll be to clause one will be the property tax exemption for farm buildings, and clause two will be the ordinance regarding open and seasonal burn. So, um and you certainly could take any. So I'll set. The, I'll, I'll make the motion, but should we decide a date before? I put yeah, it should we should find a date right now. So I think we will have it in Yeomans. In case we get more than. Okay, we get in the Yeomans and move. And then yeah. September what? Or like me. So. What's our next meeting? It would be the. September? I think it's September 5th. The That's day after Labor Day? Oh, yeah. I won't be here. So we should do the second meeting in September, which would be the 19th. Yes. Fine. Go into September. Is August or September? Let's see this September. I think that's September. September 19th. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here in Yeomans. I moved to set a town meeting in Yeomans Hall. At 323 Route 87, Columbia, Connecticut, on Tuesday, September 19th, 2023, at 6 30 p.m. Sure. Okay. Yeah. For the following purpose Clause one, to consider the adoption of a proposed ordinance entitled An Ordinance Providing a Property Tax Exemption for Farm Buildings, and Clause two, to consider the adoption of the amendment to the existing ordinance entitled Ordinance regarding open burning to be revised to an ordinance to be revised to uh, an ordinance regarding open and seasonal burning. Everybody understand? All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you. So, seven. We got All right. So, Shangri back here is here for. I need to talk a little bit about uh, the electric vehicle charging station. So, okay. Yeah, why don't we once again introduce yourself and kind of go over it for us? Sure. Uh, my name is Andy Lemo. I'm the general manager for the Tide Solutions um, Department of Energy New England. And 
um, we've been working with many municipalities in order to um, capture some incentives as well as funding towards EV charger installations across um, the state of Connecticut. Um, the DEEP released some grants um, available, some grants available at the end of last year, and we um, rushed together to get various sites walked and um, put together a full turnkey proposal for the town of Columbia. And um, we submitted applications for the grant additional to that in order to get the funding to support the full, um, all of the sites that were of, are, are of interest. The deep funding was supposed to be released in December and then it was supposed to be in January and came to be um, came to fruition in July. The way the grant was working was um, you submit all of the costing for the various sites and the chargers and uh, additional to it, any additional funding that could be um, off, without offset or total project cost. So we submitted to the Eversource program, which allows for a big portion of utility to cover um, a lot of the make ready, which is all of the electrical infrastructure that goes into a new charger installation. And um, they, the, the way the utility program works is um, they cover $20,000 of all of the make ready, all of the electrical infrastructure, and fit um, up to $20,000, 100% that goes to the electrical infrastructure and 50% of the cost of the charger itself. So we did um, a variety of site visits in the town of Columbia and put together the proposals for each of those, submitted to the utility for the incentives that would go along with it. And the utility funding was all secured. And then we submitted the applications to DEEP with the utility incentive as part of the cost outlay. And then um, presented the full proposal to the town. And deep funding came back such that they covered 100% of the install that would be out of pocket with the exception of $26,000. So the utility incentive covers a good portion of it, deep covers a good portion of it, and the, the town would then be responsible for $26,000 out of pocket for six different sites in, in the town for um, even charters. And um, as a cost sharing activity, we, we came up with the sites um, to try to look less of the labor costs in order to offset some of that cost. We walked the sites again with our labor installer contractor, and they um, had a conversation with regards to how much of his costs could be covered by the town as far as excavation. And we were able to come up to, um, to a, a cash. Um, excuse me, I'm cash I'm sure. well, a zero cost out of pocket for the, the town of Columbia with um, the excavation taken on by the town. And not only excavation, but uh, Beth Lent is here, our public director, but uh, we would handle transportation of the actual cement units and ballards from their storage facility to the site and um, any other. Um, Transportation of if, if there's gravel stored somewhere, we can move that to the site for the base work. Uh, so there's, I think we can easily do our in kind of the twenty seven thousand seven hundred seventy eight that's on this one paper. So uh, thank goodness our director is here because everybody's putting the DPW at uh, at Beth. We're gonna be able to do all this. We will. We'll make it work. Okay. From a liability sense, though, would move the equipment from the storage location here? I mean, is that something that we... the the equipment is uh, cement bases and ballers? Okay. It's, you can't hurt that. Yeah, it'll be very heavy. Yeah, we'll just. I assume you're gonna put on flatbed or something. Well, they're staged in town when we right. met with John, and he said they were gonna store them in town. So it's just yeah, we would store them right here from our trailer. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's still just moving under a flatbed on the side. Yeah. Questions? Do we have an idea of what the upkeep cost maintenance, like the kind of schedule to do that? Because I mean, that's obviously something that the budget for for a period of time. So the maintenance for the EV charters themselves, or the maintenance? Oh, well, I guess the entire the entire upkeep. Sure. So the EV charters. Um, 
Titan's um, proposal includes one year of labor and material. Um, so in that year, if anything goes wrong, it's defective. We're on call and, and we come to repair. Um, the material for the EV charger itself is um, warranty for three years. In, and um, anything that breaks in between, we would um, help facilitate to get the material that needs to be replacement. We would also facilitate the labor, but there would be a cost out of pocket if he fails after that first year. And I know yeah. talking to Chris, we thought they're working on through, I don't know who, but a, a, a program to that you could buy in for maintenance, long term maintenance. Yeah, long term maintenance. So they haven't nailed that down yet. Yeah. So do we have, is are these put your credit card in? Yes. Right. And, and so we should make a few cents on every time right. somebody's we, doing we can, something. We can so, set the profit up. Yeah, so, so as of right now, there is um, no regulation as far as what you decide as far as profit levels. The, the deep application, though, does. Um, does not allow the town for the first, I think, five years to collect any profit. You can offset the cost of your electricity, whatever is consumed, um, but for the first five years, you are not allowed to make a profit off of the okay. When you say electricity that's consumed, yes, just at those chargers? Correct. So, the <clears throat> yeah, so when you plug in your car, there's a kilowatt hour that's full, the kilowatts that are pulled into the car, into the vehicle. And then that um, that cost, um, the way it's calculated, depending on, I think the char the chargers are loop chargers is what we suggested, and the way a loop program works. So let me take a step back. <laughs> the the chargers have two components. There's a hardware component and there's a software component. The hardware is the physical thing that you see in the ground, and the software is the interface between the end user and the town who owns the charger. And that software is in its loop. And the, the software on, on a lot of different EV chargers, there's a network cost to it, just like using your phone. If you have a SIM card in your phone, click connected to Verizon, you'd have a monthly fee. The way loop offsets that and requires no network access or network fee is um, they charge for every per person that plugs in, they charge a dollar to the end user, to the, to the person plugging in, and then all of the uh, kilowatt hours that are being collected go into a bucket for the town to offset the cost of the electricity. So what happens if we need software maintenance and stuff? So in the first five years, if some, so after the first three years, mm -hmm. so fourth year and fifth year, we have major issues. I'll get struck by lightning. I'll have property insurance. But, <laughs> Somebody drives into it and didn't have insurance and ran off. Sure. You know, or or it just breaks down, or there's a what's it called? A hack. And, you know, no, I was going to have a hack, like cybersecurity. Well, this, so we're responsible for two years, 100%. You're responsible. If something happens to you for two years, it's 100% on the town. It, I'm sorry, for two years, because of the five years. Because we problem. can't. We can I'm like, right. okay, so we charge a little bit extra, stick it in a kitty, and then if you know we need something, we just take it out of there and so wash. But if we can't do that for five years, I'm thinking two years, we're liable for for our convenience for a fraction of the people in town. Now is it five years? You can't have any markup on electricity, or is it just it's that there's no profit? So if there's that on the to it. Um, you would just have to show if you needed to add that cost to it to offset whatever that liability is. Just show that you're not making any profit. That you is that money. in the contract? Yeah. If, if, contract? The if the town were to incur cost for maintenance, repairs, whatever, that we can increase over kilowatt hours and tag that onto this what everybody's paying. Because that is a convenience that, you know, we're going to maintain. We're going to have to plow around it. We're going to have to shovel around it. We're going to have to take care of it. Yeah, it's a valid point. I, I don't know what the deep contract says specific to that. I can say that you are not allowed to make a profit. That's all I know. So, How about we don't fix it for those two years? <laughs> and there it is. I'm with that. The warranty yeah. is just two years. 
Three. Three. March is three. Well, it's one year 100%, two years not. Correct. And then so two years, and not? then two more years. Oh, two, two years is what? Just parts? No way. Two years is just the material. Yep. <clears throat> so two years later. Yeah. We, we're on the four, and then two years in. Well, what's the expected life of these units? So, again, they're a three year warranty. I, I cannot tell you because they're not that old. You know, we have um, 215, I think, in the state right now, we can tell, and we have not had defects, but they have only been in for a year, a little over a year. The incentive program started in January of last year. So, who supplies the energy? Right? The energy comes from the town. The grid. Yep, it comes from the grid. And, and somebody buys it off the grid. And... Oh, yes. we would. And right. then we get reimbursed. Yes, I exactly. Now, I did, so it would come off our meter. Basically. It would come off your meter, correct. I did call Heber. Yes. And they said they actually, Donna, their finance director, said that they uh, actually have had their original units for 10 years. They've been around that long. So okay. chargers in general, yeah, they have. But yeah. when they were first released, they came out as a pilot program, and they were installed right. free of charge for lots of things. So they're now upgrading to these newer chargers now, mm -hmm. and they have them at the Senior Center, Burke Hill Park, and the Town Hall. And next, they want to do the library, and then they want to partner with businesses and help heads get some and the community line get some. So now that they're upgrading, Right from the get go, when they upgrade, can they charge a profit? Yes, they said if, if they're not going through the deep grant, it's There's the deep grant that has a contingency of no profit, oh. it's not in general, it's only the deep grant that has that contingency, okay, which is a big portion of the funding for this, these projects. And in the contract, does it say that if it goes down after three years, we have to fix it, or could we let it sit for two years? It, I don't know, that's a very good question. I can ask the but I don't know that. My guess is these units are probably expensive. Yeah. So to fix it, it's they without making a profit. The infrastructure, the infrastructure to the the equipment itself, is, or the electrical infrastructure, is the is really the burden of the cost. The charges themselves are not as expensive as the infrastructure. And it's the, the software and the computers and stuff. That no, no, it's the actual infrastructure because you're you're the 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 and and but the infrastructure will always be there. For yeah, second. correct. So if something were to go wrong, you and the side. Yep, exactly. So <laughs> the electrical infrastructure would be in place regardless of if it's loop or if it, if you change it to something else in the future. It, the infrastructure is the heavy piece of the cost. And I know Heber said right. they were using AMP up. Is that a competitor to loop? Yeah. Okay, so they're on AMP up. Will be on loop, but that's their hand on the whole, just yeah. like at the gas station, how do you charge? It's the billing and all the billing, so, and all that. And that's what, yeah, AMP up is that. And um, with loop would be in this case, AMP up um, has a network fee on a monthly basis per plug, oh. whereas loop does not because loop charges the end customer that one dollar for plugging in to carry so, that. So, when I asked about this and the necessity in our time. You said you mentioned the school bus, right? Can you kind of share that with everybody? Well, the school bus company, when we approached them asking them if they were ever considering electric buses, they said we could swap out one of our buses and give you an electric bus, but you'd have to set up the charging infrastructure for us, just like we set up the gas for the buses. Um, so we would then bill the bus company for those fees of charging the bus. Because right now, well, right now we pay for the diesel. Okay, we pay for all the diesel. We, we charge the, we have our total charge for our diesel we use, and whatever we don't use is the bus company, and the, that goes to the bus company under their, under their contract for reimbursement. Have we considered approaching businesses to see if they're the ones who wanted to do this? I mean, I could see putting in a couple. For town vehicles, senior center, I can see putting in a couple. But I. Yeah, we talked about this six months ago. Yeah, we businesses and stuff. And we don't, 
I have not knocked on doors to businesses to see if they want it. Yeah. <clears throat> You're concerned about taking away business from some other entity. That Absolutely. Has. It's hard enough to be in business today. Not to have a retail spot, but I mean, we have a plaza that could have a couple in there. We've got, you know, your spots. Okay, donuts. I think if anybody's using ours, they're they're looking for a place to charge. Yeah. Library, yeah. Yeah. So the library, go to some center. So the location, if, if you want to go forward with a grant, mm -hmm. the the, are, the applications have already been submitted, and you can't unfortunately cannot slice and dice it. So it's either we do them all, like we apply for, or we don't do them. Right, and There's, can't put them in businesses because. That wasn't an application. Right. right. Well, the, the businesses themselves can do it, and they have the same incentives available through Eversource. We can absolutely apply for and work through them as well. But they they cannot they didn't yeah. they cannot apply for the grant. So yeah, because some grocery stores not put them in there. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So so yeah. from a, from the infrastructure from lighting and all that for safety purposes. I mean, the locations we want to put these up at different places are there existing. Yeah, we're putting them there. Oh, if you go, if you go into in the behind the white paper, you can see each location. We're keeping the units close to the building, so yeah. it'll be adequate lighting for safety. Someone's charging yeah. their thing at ten o'clock at night or six o'clock in the winter. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the locations were selected based on the the lowest, the shortest run from your electrical meter that's available. And I like to really like the source. So one of the biggest ones I have a question on is the school. Right. And so would the school one be a public one, or is that going to be for town? Well, they cars they're or? allowed to decide whether, in loop, you actually advertise that the meters available to the public. Correct. Like at the hub works garage, we're not advertising. That's I would like it strictly for our use or the bus use. So. Yep, all of that detail is dictated by the software. So you can set up different plans for the residents get versus um, get charged 20 cents per kilowatt hour, but outside um, open public have, I don't know, 45 cents per kilowatt hour. You but can set up different plans. Well, in the, after the five years. So, okay. yeah. So, but for the first year, everybody, everybody who plugs in is going to be paying the same rate. Is well, you can still pay. set it up to do the, the both ways. Um, it's just that you can't show that you're going to make any profit. So, you can set up so the residents are paying 15 cents per kilowatt hour, and the town actually pays 20, and then the non residents have to pay 30 cents or something to that nature to just balance it out. All you're doing so, is feeding the kid. Yeah, exactly. But can you charge, can maintenance be factored in there? For instance, like you should say, you have to, I shovel, you have to, I can, could the man hours be calculated in there? I don't know the answer. So I'd have to, I'd have to verify that. Because that's so, what you could, because then you could offset. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you have accurate accounting. Right. So and, 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 yeah. and I would imagine even upkeep and maintenance and period, you know, if we're putting away. You know, fifty thousand dollars a year for future yeah. upgrades or replacement. I mean, that's a cost. I would think yeah. to at least investigate. You know, they took your parking spot. I know. I want that. I don't agree with that. Man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, to get, get the parking. Obviously, Chris did not know. Oh right? <laughs> no, it should be Bob Miller. Yeah, uh, Bob's wandering around doing this. Um, he's, he's just he's swimming in the. Done the I told Jen, I'm taking her spot now. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> this I want to make sure that the school has cameras. Yeah, that have this in the visual sight, please. I don't like it in the back. And I, and I, and I won't agree to this unless the school one is not public. The teachers can use it. Yeah. Uh, so you, no, you can use I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to ask. I mean, actually, okay, I'm sorry. I, I guess I'm sorry. I, I didn't know how this worked. I'm my mind. Yeah. Mistake. So since, since this is basically new, yes. I, I would like to hear your question, but I'm asking you to state your name and your address. Yeah. Then we'll go from there. Okay. Hi. Uh, Jason Rico, I live at 102 Lake Road. Um, how do you how do you make it not public? 
software. Yes, yeah, so software is your interface as the what they call the site host, which would be the owner of the town. And on that software, you have an ability to turn it off to public. You can also limit the hours that they have available to use. Um, but the, the way the software works is um, the software programs all submit um, pub, public charters into like a, it's called the and All of those chargers are available on an app. And those um, on that app, they will show visibility to them. If they turn them off as non-public, then they will not show up on an app. They won't show up on any Google. They'll show up. To, they, nobody will know that they're there unless they know they're there. And then, if that becomes a problem, then you can turn it off at certain time hours in the day. So, so Beth, do we? And you can give them access. Plow the beach. Oh, that's to be made as well. Okay. Yes. The that's beach right. location one. Do we plow there in the winter time? We have. Yes. Been. We do. So. The, yeah. Taking all this in, the, the bottom line is we get six charging stations mm -hmm. at labor and gravel costs at the time, which is less than the twenty-seven thousand dollars. If it if it breaks and the contract says we don't have to fix it because it costs thousands of dollars, which I and, and I don't I'm just, so. no, I understand that you brought this up, so I'm just adding this clarifying. Mm -hmm. Because the infrastructure will always be there. The feed from the source to the receptacle will always be there anyway. Right. So the question we ask is, do we want six EV stations paid for and placed in the town now? Uh, because I gotta be honest with you, electric is only getting more popular. That's number one. Number two, I don't know if we say no, we don't want to do this at this time. Our grant's available for this next go around. And I think it's coming. Yeah. But a big part of this grant was the Volkswagen penalty Correct. for misrepresenting. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that, that's, that's going to go away. That's going to go away. I don't, know, I don't know whether there's going to be further funding available or not. I mean, it's, a, it's an unknown at this point, but there's absolutely a push for the record. And Either we're we're on board now, where everything's covered, or later you're going to have to. It's going to be. It's written in code already for any construction. Ten percent of the parking lot has to have the availability for electric vehicles. So probably going to come down the line that the code is going to be such that parking lots in general are going to have that. And if we haven't put any in the infrastructure, then it's all out of pocket, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Well, there's like a whole bunch of buses sitting in Hartford not able to run because they can't charge it because they six won't I, 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 <laughs> I understand. We don't have the infrastructure to support all it, but we do have a dam. One front garage. <laughs> I'm always thinking. Yes. <laughs> one out here, one in your yeah. town. Right. So I think that's the setup. There's actually, there's actually. There's seven sites. Four ports. That's one, two, one, two there's six sites. Three, four, five, six, seven. There might be eight. There's two at Tom Hall. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six. I have seven written here. We're counting up eight. I need uh, to... There's Horse Porter, Sack, the library, Town Hall, the Toy Store, and the Murphy House, Public Works. Murphy House is neutral. Oh, that's Town Hall Library, Town Senior Center. I think what's You're confusing sick. is this, this says four ports at the town garage, but there's only one. Yeah, it's just four. So, right, it's like a four port. Yes. So you'd have two dual port charters. You'd have four plugs. Okay. Oh, at the town at garage. At the town garage, yeah. All right. So there's basically. There's six stations. There's six stations. Mm -hmm. And these are the four the stations have two ports. So there's ability to charge two vehicles simultaneously. Three, two. Three. So then there's actually eight, but two of them are double. Correct. Um, so there's six stations. And you can charge whatever they those are built for. Okay. So this is six. Because I'm gonna make a motion here and add the correct number. Six. Uh, uh, I 
There's six, lo there's six, six locations. No, there's there's one. From eight to oh. four. Well, there's See. five pictures here. Mark, do you have that one? Yes. See that? Yeah, he's reading it right there. I get it. But it's two, 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 four, two, four. So right. two of them are doubles. Yeah, two of them are. If they're doubles, when they say double, they're all dual fours. So why don't you read those yes. things to me? And I'll tell you because okay. there's five pictures so, here. Oh yes. So the Horace Porter School is going to have two ports. Apparently, I don't care about ports. One unit okay. with two. One unit with two folks. Yeah, that's, okay. that's one location. One location. The Saxon B. Lowbury Library has one one station. With Hold on, that may be the one I don't have a picture of, do I? I did bring the picture, but it's been in a That's where we're getting confused. Too okay. I don't have a picture. Library one. Yeah. Town Hall Yes. One at the library, one at Porter School, one at the library, one at the senior center, two at the town hall, okay. one at the beach, and two at the garage. That's that, okay. Those are stations. That's fine. Well, the only okay. picture is so. You don't see a library in these pictures, do you? Yeah. One, okay. two, that's three. the point. The ability to charge 16 card penalties. Um, so what is my answer? So Where's the one going at the library? Uh, out, front, out front, but we might move it a little bit if we stay. Because that we don't have a picture of the libraries. I have no library. It's not. Okay. That's why you're confused. I'm, no, that's why I'm. Confused. <laughs> I'm not confused. I'm correct. <laughs> you're right. We might have to go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things. You want to show that? Okay. 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 Do you need this one? No. Oh. All right. I, because I don't have the library, yes. but now I counted six here. You're going to show me the library. That's seven. That agrees with this here. Yeah. So I'm all set with seven. Okay. I'm still not confused. Okay. Absolutely correct. You're absolutely Okay. I move to proceed with the installation of seven EV charging units as presented by Titan Energy throughout the time of Columbia. Discussion. I do have a discussion. We don't have to go out to bid on any of this. We don't have to go out to bid for the grants or anything on any of it. Because we packaged it all up and submitted it as one package for the grant. We got a yes or no. We're not we're not going up there because okay. that, that's not how we set up the grid. That's fine. I just don't want somebody to say we never went out for bid and you got to pay us pay the grant back. Yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? So do I assume we have to pay all this out up front and then we get reimbursed pieces somewhere down the road. Reimbursed. Pieces. Well, so right, brands don't usually pay it, pay for it, right? You have to pay in advance and then we get that's not the way it's set up. So um the grant will pay out afterwards for any of the costs outlay. Um the utility pays Titan directly, and then anything that would be additional out of pocket is going to be a cost share based on okay. that. Yeah. The answer. The town doesn't purchase the units and then get reimbursed. Right. right. So you keep saying cost share. Yeah. Cost is going to be what we do. There's no other cost. Correct. For income. Right. Yeah. So we don't have to go to a town meeting or get by tax. So when the grant is then awarded, then when the grant money comes into play, then Titan gets paid. You submit directly to the grant. Well, the town submits the grant, but we work and facilitate all the application documentation. And what happens when you do all this and the grant all of a sudden somebody goes, We were just kidding. There's no grant money. The grant? You yeah. eating that? I can't. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna answer that for you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Okay, it's on record. I will um I have to bring that. I'm up. sure that won't happen. 
But if but yeah. it's on record, yeah. any more discussion? We have a handle That's on, a very fair question. Do you have a handle on our uh, total exposure financially for this project? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The total exposure financially out of pocket is labor and materials that DPW will use to dig the trenches and place the foundations and the ballards and transport them, correct? And all finished work, like the row, you know, repaving. We or whatever that, we're not paying for the wire and the conduit in that 27,000. No, it's just the wire the and the conduit is all part of the installation costs that are covered. And we needed the gravel supply because our gravel quarry doesn't have the right gravel for the base okay. of the... Right, the gravel is not included. It's just for it was just gravel. digging and setting. Yeah, just yeah, the digging and setting. Oh, great. You ask. Uh, I yes. talked to Chris. He said he would supply the gravel because we our gravel quarry doesn't have it. Okay. So uh, the backfill. So we can do backfill. Okay. Just the gravel base our stones too fine. Oh, I see. Okay. We, so we're gonna do a precast base. So right. But it has to sit on, on gravel. We just don't have that. Yeah, we'll cover that. Yes, that'll be covered. Okay. And so the cost to the town is twenty-seven seven seven eight. Right. Correct. I and understand. that's kind of. But that's, that's it. That's in cost. That's in cost. Yeah. That's in yeah. That, that's the value. Yeah. Labor. Correct. That's the value. Labor, fuel, Correct. equipment, mm -hmm. time, time. And that cost share would then be submitted to the grant application. That, that so we'll track that, as, like a theme. Oh, and then we could like put that on. We hope. We're not sure. We're not sure. Okay. Can we get those questions answered before we? Which question? For maintenance. The going over for maintenance. Thank you. Exactly. As far as whether or not you can use those, as far as yes. showing nonprofit or not. Yeah. What, what do no, the twenty-seven thousand installation. Can we yeah. take that so out of the city? No, that's no. our cost share. Okay, okay. Have to so do that's fine. But future maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. Probably okay. that's, the rest. That's what we're doing. Some other shovel, shovel on a Sunday. And if we can use that kitty that's stored away, no profit. What happens after five years when we can uh, charge a profit? What happens to the money that's in the kitty? You mean this? Um, as far as what's in what you've made for money in it, or if we're allowed to have a maintenance account. So, oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. So, if you put in a regular uh, maintenance cost just to offset any profit, um, and put that into a kitty. Yeah. No, no. If I'm after five years, now we can charge more than cost. Right. But what happens to the money that has been put aside? Or maintenance and stuff like that. Didn't she say we can put money aside? Right, but would that be in a capital account that you would have to? And then can we use that? But that would be problem. Yeah, sure. I, I'm not 100% sure if it is really just the, you know, you, you pay right. 25 cents per kilowatt hour, say, or kilowatt hour, and your plug is costing 25 cents, if that has to equal out. As far as I understand, you just have to show that you're not making a profit. And so if that line, if there can be a line item for any maintenance costs and added to it, I don't know that. But it, it, yeah. And where are the contracts? Is there a contract that we're signing or is that just what we had signed back in what, January? Or? So as of right now, um, that we would have an LOI that would be required. It is not in place right now. What's an LOI? Letter a letter of intent. intent. Okay. Yeah, that would just secure that you as your contractor and then. This is what you think about the owner over of money in the first five years that we're not showing any profit, but there's. There may be more money, an overage of, oh, 
that we hope to use for maintenance and stuff like that. What happens if we can't use that money for maintenance and the money builds up at the five year mark when we can start charging a profit? If we take that money and use it, that's profit we've made. It's just been sitting there for five years. Am I, am I wrong? Where does that money go? Well, that's what she's saying. She doesn't know if we can even do that. Right. Set money. So aside. if we can't, oh. She's not sure that that's allowed in the grant. That's what she's saying. She yeah. Can't yeah. Well, why couldn't we set up a capital account for future expansion, future replacement on a, what, a 10 year cycle we put away, you know, X thousands of dollars. Let me tell you how, exactly. Let me, but then if you, you so if we charge residents 15 cents correct. and we charge out of towners 30 cents, that's a difference of 15 cents, correct? Yes. That money. So in the first five years, if a lot of people come through Columbia who are not residents and they're paying 30 cents, what happens to that money if we're only if we're only buying the electricity at supplier's rate of 20 cents or 25? If there's extra money left over, yes, where does that money go for the first five years? Because at the five-year mark, when we can start making a profit, if we take that money that's sitting there, that's profit we're reaching back and taking. Where does that money go? I don't know. That the the have to pave the area around those. <laughs> yeah. You have to, yeah, you have to ask, yeah, you have to offset it. You just find a way to spend could find yeah. a way to make yeah. it. Or like that makes you do a parking lot for the bus for the lot. Yeah, I just is a way to put up the lights. Have so to that there was no problem. Whatever that looks like. Hey, Right. Correct. Absolutely. So there's different ways to structure it. You could charge the vehicle double and the bus nothing, and then your transportation costs would go down. So that I'm sure it's you get creative. Okay. I'm, I'm okay start. with getting creative. I'm not okay with somebody saying you made a pseudo profit. It's our money, or you find, or well, we just I need that answer. We need that contract, but this is just a letter of intent. So. Yeah, it would just be a letter of intent. The, the, so if we don't like the contracts, we can say no. Well, the deep award and the application is already submitted. So in order to obtain any of the money, if we send a letter of intent, we start purchasing material, we would in good faith assume that this is moving forward. If something happens with the deep funds that they would disqualify you for whatever reason, that's a that's an unknown. Um, I well, I mean, where's the contract with Luke? Where's the contract with everybody? Yeah, so it, the letter of intent would be with Titan. Yep. And then um, the loop has um, what they call a loop network access agreement that would be put in place after the charges are actually installed. And that mm -hmm. is where you have, um, you're signing up for that software, more or less. And that software, you decide how much you're going to charge. And you set up on the software, you have open access to that software. Whoever has decided to be the admin, they have access to the to change the pricing, they have mm -hmm. access to change the way the things are set up, they have access to doing okay. So I'm gonna tell you a story. We yeah. just got solar panels. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And lo and behold, in July, at five o'clock every afternoon until eight o'clock every afternoon. They were taking the money, the energy out of our battery and draining it down to 20%. Who do they? Exactly. Who was that? It wasn't the installer. It was it's Eversource. So Eversource went and did that. And there's there are programs for them to do that for peak demand that they can use battery that we bought, not leased, bought the system that we bought. They're, they're, and we have been working on trying to find out who's taking this energy for three weeks with no end. So that's why I'm saying, where's the money? I would love to see the contract because at this point, 
Eversource is the one who put in the meters. It's Eversource. We buy, it took two and a half weeks to get to Eversource. They were supposed to call us back today. Of course, they didn't. So that's just, I like to see contracts and I like to read them. Good. So the just contract would not be between you and Eversource. The contract is between Between you. us and Luke. Correct. But I'm just saying, where's I, I, I have yet to see that. Yep, but that has not been provided. Usually we don't submit the loop network access agreement until after they're in place and we're working on commissioning. We're so what if we don't like their contractor and a contract after everything is so in. loop is an open it's an open network and we could put in a different network. Okay. Loop that is another benefit of loop. They don't have their charges locked down. I don't know if you remember, but when Verizon first came out or the Google phones first came out, they would have them on lockdown only the Verizon. Apple was only locked into certain accounts. Same sort of things are happening with the chargers. Loop is an open access. So if you put in a different SIM card, you have a different network access. Charge point is proprietary. Charge point is only charge point, and they don't have an open network. Juice Bar has an open network. They choose AMP up as their um, software provider, but you don't have to use AMP up. If in the future the networks are charging crazy amounts to be connected, then you have the ability to make that change. Loop isn't charging you anything because they're, they're providing that to the end customer. They're taking that one dollar for every plug. Any more questions? I completely understand. <laughs> Very frustrating. I, I hear you. Well, I, I'm troubled by the uh, unknowns. Okay. And I would prefer to be enlightened uh, before we take a vote on this. Okay, so just so that I know for homework, what, what are the unknowns that I need to resolve? Well, there's been a lot of discussion here tonight about a lot of different unknowns. I, I'm not going to go. Read this. You know what? I think we're going to have to review this. Take <laughs> the unknowns. We'll put it in writing here. Okay. Yeah, right. I understand the contract. I can absolutely get the loop network access to And clarity on the no pop up of five years. Yeah. yeah. And that's something that Beth can look into as well, right? She can kind of verify how she could cost and depreciate and all that type of stuff. Oh, we, uh, yes, we will we'll figure that out. But the question is at the end of five years, if there's money in there. But I understand it's like, after year one, you have X amount of money, you can decrease the amount we're charging to charge the bus. Okay, so you eat up your money set aside there. So after five years, if you can't keep any money left over, you want it to come out where, you know, they can have the penny. You know, charge the bus less, charge town vehicles less if other people are paying more it's like a, a rally race across the country you know you do if it's 35 miles an hour you try to go across that line at 35 miles an hour if you go across 36 you're penalized if you go across the 34 you're penalized same thing with the money here if there's if there's money at the end and you can't keep it we didn't do it exactly right but we could be close it's all right so Okay, uh, I'm going to withdraw my motion. I'm going to look through the film. We'll come up with questions. We'll run the questions. We'll shoot them out to you. If you have more, that's great. But um, we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Do we have a time frame on this at all? No, the Eversource, Eversource is actually the one that's putting the pressure on it, not deep. Because we well, before we submitted the application for DEEP, we had to submit the Eversource application. So we showed the alternate funding. And that has an expiration date. And then uh, I don't know the specifics to your contract with Eversource, but I've heard the same funding, but it's an annual. And I think we submitted in November. So it would be 
at a time before November to get them in. You're looking for that for us. Yeah, the budget is being held right now with Eversource, and they are push, putting pressure on all of the deep funding because they've okay. been holding that budget based on the, the, the deep awards being granted that were supposed to be in January, and now they're in July. So they're putting pressure to get them installed. If they can extend it, that's another question, but usually they do. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have a contact. In, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Uh, ARPA funding update and ARPA funding project expansion on emerging cost improvement. Mm -hmm. Can I talk about that? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, The American Relief Fund, we had um, a new accounting of projects that we completed and we had money left over from our allocations. Uh, so we want to make that uh, through a motion roll back into the total fund, which now has $45,851 we can still spend. And uh, 20,000 of it came from the fire department modified their vehicle they were to purchase. Instead of 100,000 we allocated them, they dropped it to 80,000. Okay, so first of all, I'll, I'll make a motion here. We're gonna close it out and um, we'll talk about that. So I move to approve the closeout and reduction of the American Relief Funds project as of 8-15-23 today, and return the balances remaining to the American Relief Fund balance as presented. That's what he's talking about. We have the fire department money coming back. A couple of things came in a little bit less under, so there's a couple of dollars here and there. We're putting it back into our fund, and the final number when we approve this is going to be how much? $45,851. Okay, there's a motion on the floor. All those, uh, any discussion? And this is going back? Back into the we can spend it out of fund. to something else. Okay. Yes, yeah, we've already allocated to certain fund projects. Yep. Those projects are completed. They're that. closed out. There's excess money or that there's balance money back. We want to put it back in our our gotcha. fund. Yep. Any discussion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Wonderful. Yeah, we have 40. Now the now the next thing that that takes care of this 20,000. So next is the Murphy House. Murphy House needs some added improvements. In so we had we had called it twenty thousand dollars to redo the whole bathroom complex, but we're not going to need twenty thousand um, with the plans we put in place. But we do need new cameras because of the sky. We have no camera coverage around the entire Murphy House right now. So what we're gonna do is change the allocation wording if you want to read it, Steve. Yeah. I move to modify the ARPA funding for the Murphy House improvements to the bathrooms. Improvements to the bathrooms we already voted on to include new cameras and door access for social services and other facility upgrades that may become necessary to the Murphy House and Beach property. That's great. So we're still taking that twenty thousand. We're just gonna we change the description from bathrooms to bathrooms, cameras, door access to social services, and other improvements to that property. Yeah. So it's still just gonna be twenty thousand, right? Which is great. Okay. Expanding our definition of how we oh, spend still it. going to be just it's 20, still a total of twenty. So we're not changing okay. it. I'm just changing the definition okay. for um, reporting purposes for the government. Gotcha. Discussion. So we're still going to have the 45 just sitting there waiting yeah. on the project to put up. Yes. Just yeah. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. Okay. New business. Uh, posting a right to farm community. <laughs> a right to farm community signs. I move to approve the posting of a right to farm community signs as presented. Bond is on, on Zoom, if you want to hear where we'd like to proceed. Place. We're a farming community. <clears throat> we, get, we voted to give the farmers breaks to maintain farming community. So that's next. 
<laughs> this is the right to farm is if you move into the area and your neighbor has chickens or somebody does farming and they run. That is good. You, you, what? That has been voted. Correct. I'm just right. You know, all these we're just saying we're, we're going to put sign. I'm just getting permission to put the sign up around town. Right okay, now. fine. Tom, where do you want to put it? Uh, mostly <clears throat> on as you enter and exit Columbia. So there's a number of places. And then as farmers become interested, we post them close to any of the agricultural activities in town. How many signs are you talking about? What do you think? Uh, Colchester has dozens and dozens of them because they just love it out there. And Colchester adopted the ordinance at the same time that we did in 2009. So right now I'm thinking 10, but if people really like them, it could grow. We could be the sign growers. Um, they were talking what, like 200 bucks? Ish. Yeah, somewhere between a hundred and, and uh, two hundred dollars per sign. So a thousand dollars. Yes. You think each sign will cost a hundred, one hundred fifty dollars? Yeah, no, it's basically the cost of the metal. Twenty-four by thirty and eighteen by twenty-four. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. It's not. They're not twelve by. Eight. You know, most town, most like. Do you have a budget for that? Either? I believe conservation, agriculture. Was that in the I think you're right. I think it's in the budget. It's in the budget. Not positive, but I think we did. So I would like to see if That's we're going to say we're a right to farm community, I'd love to see no, no. look at uh, right when it's all lumped into your that one budget. Our, so I'm just asking for a motion to approve the posting of these signs. I'm not asking for anything else right now. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. How we pay for them? Somebody's got to come up with it. <laughs> Town clerk, trade names cancellation. So this is a new form that we haven't had this form, and I guess it finally came up that a company needed to uh, cancel its trade name. So this is an official form, and it just, just needs to be voted on by the select because it involves a financial uh, transaction with the town clerk's father. Yeah. I move to approve the new trade name cancellation form as provided by the town clerk. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I assume there's a fee with filing this form to the town clerk. <laughs> Columbia Lake, Dam Beach, nothing appointments, nothing. Uh, town administrator. Um, this Thursday night, Trust of Public Lands is having a fundraiser to, to um, at the Hudson Winery. You can buy tickets from Jen at our office, or you can go at the door and buy tickets there. Sixty dollars each, and that will give you a glass of wine and a catered buffet and music. The music. Jen's going to play the ukulele. Where's John? Where's John? And this is really uh, accompanied by Jen. <laughs> funding to help uh, make this the state park a reality and great trails and support Trust Public Lands, who has a lot of expenses in putting this all together. Uh, next. This, this is good reading. I suggest you read this and take it home. Uh, there's, this is a, a, a very understandable synopsis of all the legislation that just happened, um, including uh, the improvements we have to make to our dog town unless we regionalize and make the improvements. I had it all set up to regionalize with Hebron, but now Hebron might have to move its location of its public work garage again. Can we hire a kennel? Well, the agreement would be, in, in theory, it would be great to do it with an already approved region. Yeah. No, but I'm saying, how about a commercial county to take our dog on? I mean, how many do we have? One or two a year? I mean, a half dozen a year? Well, we just had two last week. They were abandoned. We gave them back to the daughter. 
Yeah, that's two. That's two. And uh, well, no, we probably have. Well, it, yeah, I'd say, say six to is it, ten a year. Would it be cheaper to just? It would. What happens if it's during the summer and our kennels are uh, our contractor kennel is full? Then we use ours as a backup kennel right now. But all you need is one hoarding issue, and it, like Keeper is still have sixty dogs in. In they're paying, I think they're paying a lot, a lot of money to house all these dogs. And because they're going to court, they can't die in yet. Foster? <laughs> uh, it's a mess. Hoarding is your biggest fear as a town. That's why you want to nip it in the bud right away through oh. active. Okay, we're not voting on that tonight, right? So, what else? No. Um, that was just an example. And then um, C chip, just good news. This was the experiment where we tried to uh, go into our first six town consortium for insurance. Uh, we just did the final uh, dissolution of our bank account, and uh, that's behind us. I got state plan still working. Great. State plan's working great, and we're all employees are happy. So that's going well. And then um, oh, a reminder that we have a Kona meeting on August 31st at 9 a.m. at the Senior Center. You're all invited. And we're going to discuss affordable and senior housing. And we'll have a guest, uh, Chris Ramp, will be uh, discussing some ideas he had for his property. The one uh, next to the fire department? Possibly do do. do and I also sent a, I gave you a copy. Can you send us a, an invite? Yes, that'd yes. be great. Mm -hmm. yes. yes, thank you. Uh, Connecticut DOT did finally get back to us on a request to look at uh, mid-block crosswalks and prove signage on Route 66 at Middletown Road between Hunt and West and Hennepin and Pine. And they'll review those conditions and advise us on the outcome of the review. So they're, they're very behind in any request you make. It can take up to a year to do. Did we not ask for additional signage, lighted signage for the curve on 87? Yeah, they didn't mention. I think they've already told us they're working on that. And we're just waiting to hear the results. Right. Okay. I came down West Street the other day. And the stop sign is behind the telephone. It's behind the telephone pole. And that's the biggest problem. If I think it needs to be telephone lit. pole. No, can we can Eversource move that telephone pole in? Is that our expense then? I believe I don't know if that would be this a state request because the stop sign entering a state road, like if it was hit by in a car accident, the state's required to replace that, not us. Those are their stop signs. Can we move that in the dead of night? <laughs> well, it's in the yeah. parking lot. Yeah. It's in that right parking lot and better than no, the ground. So we can't be move. liable if there was not. Because it's it's completely I would, so you don't see it. Off. That's the problem. It's, yeah. it's like all of a sudden when you get by the telephone. Okay. Just a thought. No, you know what? Let's um include that in the no. Now let's let's send another request for that as an urgent and strong language in there about um, <clears throat> on-site, non-site, on-site lines, whatever, yeah. and uh, concern for for traffic accidents. Um, just so we're on record. And kind of like you, you've kind of been notified. Yeah, and I, I can, we can respond to this. The same type of worry we have for the Route 66 East path. Yep, I, I know what you mean. Yep. We just take that off. Sure. Uh, correspondence, are you, I'm sorry, are you done? No, I'm done. Okay. Correspondence, a lot of articles in there. Um, yeah, read it for yourself. Good solid drawing to say budget, no transfers, no refunds. Well, we have um, plenty of transfers. Oh, we can sound like she's, I'm sorry. Yeah, so that 
in the year and closing. Um, some of the bigger transfers are because bills came in late. I make a motion we approve transfers reflected in summary from the finance department stating the year. What are they? Well, pretty standard. There's a few logs had to go to continuity or the cross the fire margin. Department of Public Works. Department of Public Works. What? Well, I don't know. The Department of Public Works. Supplies. Yeah, you're, you're, you're covering yourself. Right. Okay. I got to have a little fun again. If I don't have a little bit of fun, cover the cost budget for near rack and the receiving year. Any other discussion? Any discussion? All those in favor of covering the transfer? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Refunds. One. With the refund? Yeah. yeah. So what happened was the Webster Bank sent a tax payment to us when they should have sent it to Manchester. So we refunded the town of Manchester. And Beverly and Carol worked with Manchester and the taxpayer to get this all settled. But they, they chose the wrong drop box. And accidentally got $25,849. It was not hard. You gotta give us credit for trying to stick it in. And Carol is like, where is this? I don't see where this is going. <laughs> Carol made sure that correct. Uh, Make sure you got Thank you. I move to approve the transfer of $25,849.15. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. I said refund it. Yes. Yeah. bills. Refund. Okay. I move to approve the payment of bills for $264,334.70. It's uh, 2223 emergency, 2324 emergency, 2223 regular, 2324 regular. And credit card and paper. You need credit card and paper. <clears throat> um, vote house, how's that coming along? Uh, good, we've submitted, we haven't signed a contract with the um, building yet because we're waiting for authorization for permit. So they've authorized the foundation and we for the foundation. Right. So for the port foundation now away from the actual structure. What happened to our uh, beach building? That got replaced. What happened to it? They oh. needed to replace um, a resident lost his brakes and drove into Pete Newmax Rock. He the rock stopped him so he didn't crash into the parking lot and the gate stopped him. So insurance covered it. Insurance covered. Yeah, I see my insurance covered. Just, just wondering what happened to the guy. Are they going after the guy for the year? Yes. And then we'll get reimbursed right through his insurance. We already did. We did that too. We, we submitted to their his agency. So Pete Newback in Memorial say, <laughs> People in our party. Okay, so are we a state of John Newmack? We paid the attorneys twenty five hundred. Is that what is that? Say again. Uh, for the estate of John Newmack, we paid Halloran and Sage twenty five hundred and seventy two dollars. Is that legal? Is that your session? It's it's here. It's here. You know what, Chairman? We didn't say that's a plain talk. VCR number. There's a bunch of these things here. 
So why are you giving an answer on that? Mayor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not really done. So the 9,000 we laid out for the boats on concrete, is that insurance will pay us back? That, I'm sorry, the $9,000 we outlaid for the concrete for the boathouse insurance, that, is that covered under the insurance? Yes. That Dan Johnson's covering that project. Oh. Let's see. What? I would think so because there is no foundation damage. Okay. Four. See, we paid uh sell it quite a bit. How, how are we doing at the transfer station and, you know, budget water and everything? Well, we're contracted to the, to the June of 2024, so our rates are good after that, and you might see it between the 30 and the 40 percent. So, did we get a new dumpster? There's a, there's a big 15,918 chargers that are months mm -hmm. worth. That's a month's oh, worth, but yeah. usually we don't have a system. They can sell our bills by the month. Okay, so it's still a month. It will be every two weeks. Yes. Or, okay, so that's a month late. How's the building coming along? Looks like we're in the building process. Yeah, we're almost complete, so okay. nice. How are we doing as far as budget? Um, I think we're below budget. We just need to purchase some debt. So another question. Yeah, the public aspect of the school, is that monitor budget? Yeah, that's no, that's a, a word address system. system. Address system, it's it's capital, so it comes out of us, but it, it's for the school. <clears throat> Oh, the site investigation? No, the um, public address system. Public address system, they had to improve the at section of the school where you couldn't hear the speaker address system, but they had to fix it. So there's Silver, Petrocelli, and um, so that's, that's their first payment towards this project at $1,400. Okay. I don't have how much they do. No, I don't know, because that didn't ring a bell when I was having gone through all the check -through. I have to go to the Apple check, not this check register. Okay. So those aren't in there, those four? Correct. At least by numerical, I didn't find them, I didn't find them. Okay. okay. Um, any other questions? Paying these with Sonic Wall clients and subscription out of curiosity, that's four thousand three hundred and fifty cents. No, oh, it's Novus, never mind. Yes, but and that would be part of yeah. the security. I just miss that. Usually, I see that. We have questions about paying the bills. We're going to pay these bills and then you'll get an answer on those. Or yeah. Good. Any discussion? More? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Money to citizens. Um, let me chat. And 
should be just talked with before any transfers happen. So we're, we're trying to make sure that happens. Thank you. Anybody else in the chat they want to say anything? No, sir. <clears throat> Board member comments. We have a extended session. Yes. That's why. Yep. I just Matt. have one, and I'll figure out what you want. Um, so my husband, Rich, and I were talking. Do you realize in three years, it's going to be 2026, and it'll be the 250th anniversary of this great nation? Yes. And do you remember 1976? Because I do. I had a blast. It was like the, they had town-wide parties, and there was, and I think it's going to take a long time, maybe a committee or something, to and even do we get together with other towns? It might just be worth something to look at in advance. Just a thought. I actually like that comment because I've already talked to the Lions Club <laughs> about the parade, how they should be putting out contracts now for the 4th of July parade. For 20 days. Yeah. I, but... I mentioned to them last year and they're looking into it. Um, I also like that comment. I'd love to see uh, a couple of town celebrations. Right. Could be fun. Just fun. We contract professionally for fireworks. Do it now. In August. <laughs> did, did we ever hear any update from State Trooper around that swatting incident? I no. ran down and up and up. That was weird. Yes. Disturbing. Yeah. William? Are you entertaining any comments? having to do with the uh, Columbia Historical Society and, and the events coming up in the next couple of years? What would those be? No, I'm just saying we were talking about the uh, 2026 Columbia Historical Society is planning on participating in statewide events. They are? Yes. That's news. To... We haven't heard that time. Okay, it's one of the many committees. Come on. <laughs> we'll expect a full report from Judy when she gets okay. Or Tom. Or Tom. <laughs> no, Judy. <laughs> okay, that's it. I don't have any comments. We're good to go. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to suspend the at 824 selectman meeting and move to executive session for legal. For legal. And I'd like Mark, you'd like Mark to say. Mm -hmm. And um, Matt Brown and Beth Lund. And Matt Brown and Beth Lund. Coming out at two, and uh, we're going to adjourn at 9 of the break. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No, 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 no votes were taken.